All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the Space Viking Chronicles. Ooh, it is it has been a long, long day. I am with instead of uh, four people, we got three tonight. Potentially a fourth that will be coming along with us, and um, if so, we'll swap to the other scene whenever that person comes. But for tonight, um, I'm Margaret Crone. I'll be your your dungeon master today, and with me are a slew of awesome people. So we'll go around the around the around the spaceships and let them introduce themselves, talk a little bit about themselves and their characters, and then um, I'll tell you how you, as a viewer, can be part of the campaign. Um, I hope you guys are doing good today. Mm-hmm. Doing right. uh, all right, yeah. Been, been excited for this. <laughs> I know, you've been waiting for a while. Uh, so we'll go we'll go clockwise like I normally do. So Varys, you can kick us off. Um, who is Varys? And of course you can talk a little bit about yourself as well, Derp, which, which you do. Hello, so my name is Rick. I also go by Derp Digital. I am head moderator for Roll For It and Enter Lysium. It's uh, a lot to keep up with. You know, E, -E being E. Um, <laughs> when I'm not busy doing that, I also have my own YouTube channel and Twitch, which are currently kind of on the side because of life. But I'm also here playing Varys, who is a uh, wood elf ranger who is. He swears the forest is out to get him. And last episode, that actually came true because, well, we got attacked by a huge tree on and a tiny bush. They're all dead now. <laughs> Or so you think. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I took a piece of bark from the big tree ants. So yeah. uh, that's a that's a trophy. It's a trophy. <laughs> what are you gonna do with it? Uh we'll get to that shortly, actually. Oh. Hey. Interesting. Alright. Yeah. Cool. Moving on over to our next uh player here, we have Endermancer, aka Tech Priest Khan. Uh tell us a little bit about you as well as who Roxy is. Hello. I'm uh Tech priest, or you can just call me Can. Can is shorter. Anyway, I'm prime. <laughs> I'm I'm usually yeah. I usually just lurk. I'm just like a residential lurker in most places. And I'm playing uh, Roxy, the tiefling cleric who worships Helm and has maybe something going on with Uthal, which is interesting. Maybe we'll see Uthal later if he decides to ever join us. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we've got, uh, last but not least, we have Quiet Geek, a.k.a. Ardoth, a.k.a. Infinity. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then, of course, um, about Ardoth. Yeah, um, about me, um, you can mostly find me hanging around various discords, um, yeah, I've been around for a while. Also, roll for it and various other places. Um, Ardoth. Ardoth is a half elf who seems to perpetually make bad decisions, I think is a good summary. <laughs> uh, Welcome to the club. Yeah, Sometimes it's um, not a decision of your own choosing, though. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, but. Yeah, let's, let's start with. Warlock, um, which has everything associated with that, and then wild magic happened. So, yeah, he's <laughs> not at all made decisions that will come back to bite him later. Not in any way, shape, or form. No, not at all. Sounds like he's had a hell of a time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and for those who, who might have missed that, he literally spent a while in hell as a result of wild magic, so yeah. To them, uh, he was only missing for a short period of time, but for Ardoth, it was a much longer time that he spent there. As the, the time does not work the same in each plane that you are in. Yeah. Not that he's actually told anyone that yet, but hey. Minor details. Minor details. You have been more talkative in the group than normal, but even last episode, someone said you were still quite very quiet to them, so it was interesting. Yeah. Because they well. had mentioned that you talk telepathically to people, and that was something um, Barris has been encountering with this mage lady. Um, yeah. Hasn't been doing that for a while. 
Strangely, that may or may not coincide with his trip to hell. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Um, all right. And so I think we'll start things off with first, I, there might be some things that you all want to do. So I always like to let you guys uh, kind of do your own thing and then I'll bring you into what today's journey will be. So um, I'm curious, first of all, what Roxy has been up to in in like the past few episodes that uh, you've not been here. So you've been, you've been probably around in the town and whatnot doing things. Um, I know you had a few things that you wanted to do. We did offline, but you can talk a little bit through what those things were. Um. So, yeah, I think for the most part, Roxy's either just been helping around the town wherever she can or been mostly around either in her room or in around the lovely Church of Helm that there is there. But at some point, she actually was like, you know, this nun outfit isn't really going to work out for me if it's stuff go south so she went somewhere to go get some armor which is really nice what'd she end up picking up i uh, got some scale mail that's gonna be handy dandy anything else that you picked up um i also picked up an item which she's going to eventually give to Uthal if she can find him all right, I guess we'll figure out what that what that item is uh, when when the gift is received. I like that idea. Um, anything else that uh, Roxy's been up to or that she wants to do? Um, uh, probably look at the quarterstaff, like in tune with it, because she's had that for a while now, and she's kind of probably been occasionally like looking at it, trying to figure out what it actually does. <laughs> Yeah, where not... where is she um, kind of investigating and attuning with this staff? Um, probably at she probably be at the church, maybe. Okay, so you're like inside of the church. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, um, Roxy, you are kind of sitting down in one of the pews, and you have the staff. Laying, like sitting, you know how like you can just lean something up against the ground and kind of have it sitting there. Um, and as you're finishing your prayers, you look over and you're kind of intrigued by this staff. You're like, oh yeah, I haven't. There must be something special about this staff, right? Do you remember how you attained it? It, it just kind of when she first arrived in the town and started helping out with fire elementals, it just kind of appeared in front of her which she used her tail to snag. So I think it was Baz wouldn't take it. It was either Baz or Ardolf. I don't remember because I know, remember someone ran at her and then the staff appeared, so she grabbed it. Yeah. This magical item just appeared in front of you. And you've been carrying it around with you, but you haven't really had time because there's been so much stuff going on. Really, since the moment you came into the town you were immediately thrust into combat and trying to heal people um you've dealt with some weird thing where you exploded you lost all your gear but what you had left with you were these little bits and bobs right um mm -hmm. and so you pick up the staff and you hold it in your hands across your lap and um go ahead and read in the loot section, what that staff is and what it does. You should now okay. have access to that. Okay. It's a staff of healing. This staff has 10 charges. When, While holding it, you can use an action to expend one or more of its charges to cast one of the following spells from it. Using your spell save, DC, and spell casting ability, cure wounds, one charge per spell, up to fourth, lesser restoration, two charges, or mass cure wounds, five charges. The staff regains 1d6 plus four expended charges daily at dawn. If you expend the last charge, roll a d20. On a nat one, the staff vanishes and a flash of light lost forever. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it doesn't use your spell slots. It doesn't? It doesn't <laughs> use your spell slots. It uses the slots of the, the staff. So the staff has 10 charges. And that means you have 10 potential spells or 
you know, variations depending and like um, if you use one, then if you use a level one cure wounds, right, that would only be one charge. But if you used a fourth level, that'd be four charges. If you used uh, lesser restoration, it would be two charges. If you used mass cure wounds, that would be five charges. So you can do math on that. And then, you know, you roll your RNG and if you roll a one, it disappears. But that's rare, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's Called why I was it. like, now I want to note Roxy, and, <laughs> AKA Tech Priest, received this staff on episode one. <laughs> I and is just trying now, to look at it. Is just now looking at this, and it is technically our 14th day of playing. It, it seems to be a bit of a habit around people here, isn't it? Like, hey, we've got this cool sword and this stuff. Let's, you know, put it in the back there where it can gather dust for a while. I think Nate was probably the, the biggest because Nate was like, this weapon is amazing. How did I not use this before? Oh, and I guess Baz's weapon as well. Speak of the speaking devil. Speaking of Nate, yeah. he's alive. Oh, yeah, there's Stan. <laughs> I called it. He's going to appear on roll 20 first. <laughs> no, he's been in Discord for a couple minutes Okay. Ah. Uh, join into the Sorry call. to ruin your I fight. already have a call set up, so but we might have to move people's cameras around, which we can do really quickly. Uh, we actually so set them up before going live, so it can be fixed in like 10 seconds max. Well, the cameras I have to be like <clears throat> fixed because he'll be doing <laughs> I was so proud of myself, too. Oh. <laughs> Alright. We will have to move people around, so if everyone drops camera and then we'll move people back. Boop. So it's going to be... Wrap your camera quick, Nate. Uh, Roxy first. Ooh, I'm first. Yay. Then Ardoth. And then Uthal. And then Bears. Oh. Alright. All right. Go. Sweet. <laughs> you got a back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Thanks for joining us, Nate. <laughs> Sorry. Glad you could <laughs> make it. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. It was just funny. We're like, you know what? Right when we get things started, he's gonna show up. <laughs> um, but it's fine. Um, so we just found out what Roxy was up to. Roxy had traveled a bit of far away, so this is why Roxy has been gone for quite a few episodes, is um, she's been off actually trying to get some new armor. There's not a lot of armorers here in town, so she had to kind of go on a little bit of a journey. She was able to get some, what was it did you get? Scale mail. Scale mail. That's what it was. Sorry. I knew it was some kind of mail. Uh, <laughs> and got a little gift for somebody else on the way as well. And while sitting in the church, realized, oh yeah, I have this staff that I, you know, been carrying around with me. And for the first time, she has a moment to herself and after prayer, finds out what the staff does. And it's, it's a pretty sweet staff. So I hope you enjoy playing around with that. Oh yeah, no, that's... Can you that see why I kept going, us. are you gonna check out what the staff does? <laughs> this is the thing, I have been reminding them every episode that they're, they're on too. I'm like, you know you have a weapon on you that's magical, potentially. <laughs> I could try, but a lot of stuff has happened. <laughs> that's I know true, that that's feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Shenanigans and tomfoolery. Um, but yeah, I thought you would enjoy that staff because it's pretty sweet. Also, I feel oh, yeah. like sometimes as clerics, you don't feel like you have enough spell slots, so I thought it would be kind of a cool way to give you Oh, something. yeah. It's cool. I hope you enjoy that. Is there Thank anything you. else Roxy wants to do? Um, again, I think it's mostly just try to find out where Uthal is. All right. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment. The next person who has been gone for quite some time, um, Ardoth. What have you been up to? Spending quite a while in the inn. Trying to work out where that occasional dripping sound comes from. Mm. And making trips into the forest to keep an eye on a certain portal that he knows exists. Just to make sure it's not causing trouble. Okay. The one to the north? Uh, yeah, where the wolf flower was. Yeah, where the wolf flower was. Okay. I think that's like northeast. 
Um, yeah. Uh, let's do first the investigation role for the looking around the inn, trying to figure out where this dripping is coming from. The mysterious dripping noise. The ten. Yeah, no, I don't think yeah. it's going to work out. Just so you guys know, to the right of me are ways that you can be part of the campaign and interact with it. If you do explanation point St. Jude in chat, $5 gives somebody inspiration, 10 gives a nat 1 or nat 20, 15 gives a wild magic, 20 gives a magic item, and 30 makes a threat. Now things to note here is if you want to give someone something, you need to make sure you tell me who it's for and what the, what the thing is. So like... For instance, if you want to give somebody a natty one or natty twenty, you need to tell me if it's a natty one or natty twenty, and who it's going to. Uh, you can th you can have things go to multiple people if you donate the correct amount. Um, magic items, you can suggest what you'd like it to be, but I will normally pick it based on like making sure that it makes sense for the setting. Um, and threats, they're not always a monster or something of that sort. They can be things like buffing some a monster or a potential bar fight or things of that sort so um it doesn't necessarily mean a big bad boss shows up all the time but it can um yeah yeah we've had some right. of those <laughs> <laughs> so i think the next thing is going to be um yeah with that 10 investigation you are you made I'm, I'm guessing that you're mostly probably staying around your room kind of maybe moving out and looking you went upstairs i know at one point and you were looking up there to figure out if something up at the top um was up there in fact at one point you um walk by one of the rooms and um there's actually a cleaning lady kind of standing in the doorway and another gentleman it looks like one of the um one of the guys who normally brings in the logs, because you've seen him, him a couple times bringing in logs in and out of the inn yeah. um, for the for the hearth, and uh, you see them both peering into a room, and they are looking. Uh, one of them is like going in the room and leaving the room, and um, kind of a little panicked, uh, whereas the other one seems much more calm about it um, and is trying to like guide the uh, the maid and like calm her down. Okay. Do I get any sense of what they're doing there? Not from Why? not unless you like want to walk up. You can totally walk up and talk to them. I'm just saying that's something that you see as you're walking around and investigating. Okay. But one of them's calm collected about it, so not panicking. Not super calm, but I mean he he seems like he's calmer. Uh, he, but they both at first were initially looking into the room, like, like, mm -hmm. kind of like what, and like exchanging looks. And then the other, the the maid, she looked a little bit more panicked, and she was kind of like pacing, and he was kind of just trying to calm her down. Right. Okay. <laughs> I'm assuming they notice Ardoff walking around. They don't seem to be noticing you that you can tell. They seem to be pretty preoccupied with whatever it is that's going on in this room. Okay. Like, the lady's freaking out a little bit. She looks very distraught. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Thank you, Aurora. <laughs> we will get to that. <laughs> Oh, no. Um, I think Ardos I know the perfect make, moment to use it. Will actually make a point of walking past and making enough noise that they will know he's there, but unless they actually actively ask for him to help, uh, he's he's just going to lead them to it. Yeah. What what kind of noise are you making? Like, what is it that you're? What kind of sound well, are you making? He will be basically... One of the things he does, particularly when there's nobody around to watch him, mm -hmm. and when he thinks he's by himself, is he will, rather than just walking along, he will be, he will use his 
uh, quarter staff to actually help him walk. Aww. Because <laughs> he thinks he's ancient. <laughs> he does think yeah. he's ancient. Uh, <laughs> there was wild magic right. that makes him think he's very old. <laughs> yeah. But really, so, Ardoth is fly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he, he tends not to... He tends to try not to do that when there are people around, but it means he's, he's basically has his quarter staff with him as a, as a walking stick all the time so i think it's it's one of those where he'll he'll actually make knocking sounds oh you're like as... doing the old man like kind of creepy like yeah you're like yeah. slowly on the wood paneling like moving your staff on the floor i love or, it on yeah basically knocking it against the floor as he walks along until they yeah, so as you walk by them and you and you make this noise and, and, and it's clear that you're are you looking over at them? Um I will periodically be looking in their direction, but I'll be focused on where okay. he's going. Yeah, the lady is like <sighs> she's like trying to keep calm and the gentleman's like you need to pull yourself together. And uh she as soon as she sees you, she kind of like freezes and she just kind of like stands there. She's holding like a bucket. It looks like she has a, a mop and she's just standing there like frozen. She's not moving. And uh, the gentleman kind of leans up against the other wall. Like they're both kind of like in the doorway trying to block the doorway, it looks like. And uh, he's like just leans on the side of the wall. He's like, have, have a nice day, sir. Thank you. I will. And she's just oh, like... Oh, oh. <laughs> she looks like... Ugly. She's seen yeah, a ghost. They definitely don't want help. Okay. Not gonna interfere. Roll me an insight check. <laughs> it's kind of funny because like uh, Varys and... and... Uh, we all know. <laughs> yeah, you think they totally, they just don't want help. That's what's going on yeah. here. They're yeah. not trying to hide anything. Totally no, just, not at all. nothing's it's happening. Weird. They're just, it's, yeah. As subtle as it's a chainsaw. <laughs> yeah, well, out of character, I know exactly what that is, but yeah. <laughs> out of character, yeah. <laughs> so you For heard. those of you who don't know, last episode... Well, actually, two episodes ago, Uthal put a bunch of ears around a bed that Tover was sleeping in, which is Paladin Hulk's character, and uh, Tover reported it, that, like, there's a bunch of ears in his room. Oh, this is disgusting. Yeah, he it was disgusting. It must be cleaned. <laughs> yeah, it had to be cleaned. He during... couldn't sleep there. It was the most horrible thing he's ever seen, um, and... <laughs> He reported it to the maid, or to the maid, and then the maid was like, "Oh my gosh!" And she got the other guy, the other gentleman involved, and yeah, yeah. I thought that would be a cute thing to bring into this. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing that does occur to me um, that Ardoff would do when he's investigating the dripping is just checking whether or not there's a portal present anywhere near. If you can his... turn your mic up a bit. Yeah. Okay. You're a little quieter than everyone else. Yeah, Ardoth would check whether or not there's a portal present anywhere near his room. If there's any what next to his room? Uh, portal. Portal? Using oh, you're portal. looking for a portal. Okay. Using his ability. Just in case. He's All right. not actually expecting anything, but you never know. So you go back into your room or outside of your room and do this? Um... I think the easiest way of doing it, because it'll be... Oh no, it, it won't, doesn't actually get blocked hey, Frodo. by anything, so he'll do it in his room. Okay. For those of people who maybe haven't seen you do this before, what does it look like when you're doing it? Or maybe you do it differently this time? Um... Hardoth basically... moves into the middle of the room glances around make sure there, there isn't any dri dripping or anything odd in the immediate vicinity you don't there. hear any dripping right now yeah 
Um, leans on his quarter staff, closes his eyes, and reaches up to the crystal that he wears as a pendant around his neck, and just focuses his attention inward, and then opens his eyes and looks around, feels around with that sense that he's developed uh, that, that lets him feel the presence of portals. Yeah, and so this allows you to sense if there's a planar portal near you mm -hmm. um, within one mile. Yeah. Um, within one mile, I don't think you feel that this time. Excellent. Okay. So you, you kind of close your eyes and you look around and it's not the same as last time. Last time the area around you changed and it felt and it looked different, right? Where you yeah. are right now, you it's almost like a fog laid over your vision and the paneling in the wood has like this purple hue and foggy hint to it. But it doesn't give you that feeling that there's a portal nearby. Okay. So at least the dripping isn't extra planar in origin. That's one thing ruled out. So, yeah. And I think that about covers everything I'd have to do, at least in the short term, unless it occurs again. Unless you what? Of eternal dripping. Unless it happens again. Okay, so. the dripping happens again. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, that's what uh, that's what you do. Now we're going to um, move to Varys and Uthal. Now you have parted ways with Baz and um, Tover, as I think Varys was basically like, so well, someone needs to stay here and watch. Maybe you know, maybe the mage will come back. We can't have her, you know, causing chaos in town or whatever else might be coming from the forest. We need to fend it off. Um, Baz and Tover both agreed well maybe not so much tover it seemed like he wasn't keen on staying out in the woods and that house that was near there did not seem to be in tip-top shape um so perhaps tover might not stay there overnight but may come and check on um baz throughout the night um whereas baz gladly chose to just to stay and help um and we pan over to the two of you walking down the street towards the inn or wherever you may be wanting to go. Um, is there any conversation between the two of you? Well, I, I'd probably uh, suggest walking to like where I have my camp set up, which is like somewhere northeast of town in like a field. So like collect my stuff so I can set my camp up south, like probably along somewhere where we walked past. It's like that seems like a decent place to camp rather somewhat defensible, still gives like a good eye of the surroundings. Okay. Uthal would, would be joining him just to help him uh, pack all of his stuff and maybe give him a bit more tips on defense if he can. Yeah. What, what tips does Uthal give him on defense of his tent? Please share. I want, I want this RP in my life. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, make sure your tent is at least uh, five feet or so from each tree so that you have enough space to hop out and attack if should anything bother you. Yes, yeah, not to mention that we've had some trouble with trees lately. And I like hold this piece of bark in my hand, and, like throw it up occasionally and catch it. Yeah, as you do that, um, actually one of the trees jostles and a leaf comes floating down. I glare it down while we walk. Yeah, Thank you me. glare at it as it's slowly floating. It probably takes, you know, five minutes for it to actually land on the ground. I think you angered it. Who well, thought the whole says. <laughs> has been angry lately. <laughs> yes. Well, hopefully we don't have to face too many more trees well if we have Baz around his lumber uh, his lumberjacking skills will be put to the good use that's definitely a guarantee until then 
I don't need I forgot sleep. he has an axe. He's to... totally a lumberjack. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you saw how he was swinging he the axe chopped, at the Yeah, tree. he chopped that tree. Yeah. I didn't think that... I forgot that he is totally a gel lumberjack. <laughs> the vicious one, but, you know. I'm not one to criticize his works. But yeah, as we walk, I will, like... Probably make a bit of small talk and like talk about the dragon and like how far away it was and like basically plot out in like a mind map. So like we were three three miles into the forest, which is like three hours, and I sensed it like forty one hundred feet away at the time in that direction and stuff. Basically setting up a plan for the dragon meeting, whatever. Trying to try like triangulate the dragon, kinda. Yes, once we get to camp, I will uh, cast the detection magic again, so that we'll have two points of reference. Which should give us like a basic idea of where to expect it, and then come morning, once we're all rested and recovered from the, uh, the fight, I think we should head out and discover more about it. Not necessarily fight it, because lord knows it's difficult enough to fight all the things that show up around here. Never mind an adult dragon. But, uh, this warrants investigation. Yes. Uh, Aggie, what would Uthal know about dragons? Um, you can roll me a nature or a history. Um, they will each wield you different types of information about dragons. Uh, or red dragons specifically. Um. Yeah. Um. I think those make the most sense for trying to figure out dragony things. They're both negative ones. Let's go. <laughs> Roar. You got this, my dude. <laughs> you don't a got two? this, my it's dude. Not a, it's not a one. Uh, dragons are big. They breathe things. It hurts. Okay. And do you know that normally they are hoarding some kind of loot of some sort? So dragons are renowned for um, having lots of amazing loot. Um, many people hunt them down specifically to uh, attain such, you know, treasures. Um, dragons themselves, um, their scales are very strong. Different types of dragons have different types of powers. You don't know which ones do what, but you know that much. Okay. So That's it's... what you get with the two. I mean, it's pretty common sense stuff that <laughs> most people know about dragons. <laughs> Roll the three. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uthal probably relay what he knows to Varys about dragons and say, perhaps we can make armor from its scales if we can kill it eventually I, I, you know I was kind of hoping to just walk up to it and talk to it instead talk to a dragon yes I spent quite a bit of time here in the library and reading up on dragons they're one of my favorite enemies now, one might say. So, if need be, well, you know, dragons, they're, they're, they're wise creatures, at least. They can speak common, but if need be, I can converse with it in Draconic. And I'm basically an expert on dragons now, which is good. So, the dragon will see reason. Is that what you're saying? I'm hoping that my witch and charms and like runs a uh, hand through his hair like, will be enough to not get us killed on sight. <laughs> but getting some extra people on the journey might be uh, a good precaution. That would... Sounds like a good idea. I would also like to have a word with Ardoth at some point about uh, the way he speaks. Uh, yes. And I'm not talking about the uh, the way you and I are talking. Yes. Meeting someone else who can do that is a bit unsettling. Yes. 
hopefully he will be able to help us a bit with the uh, the mage. All right. And as you say that, um, we actually see um, Roxy walking down the street to the north of you. You're both about probably 10 feet away from the inn door. Um, and Roxy is about 20 feet away from you coming down the street. Looks like she just turned the corner from where, um, you know, the Church of Helm is, is off to the right. Uh, Roxy, I guess, kind of looks at Uthal and immediately is just like, Uthal! Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Uthal will turn towards Roxy and You'll have to walk towards her Because she's like towards. about 20 feet down the street from you But you could walk towards her um, and okay. Excuse yourself from Varys if you want Excuse me Varys And Uthal will of course. start walking towards Roxy uh, Varys do you go yeah. into the inn? Uh, yeah I'll go inside Get a drink why not Okay you walk into the inn, and yeah, well, let's... Uthal, you walk up to Roxy, Roxy meets you. It's like you both walk halfway and meet one another in, um, in the street. How's it been? Good. How are your travels? They were good. As you can see, and she kind of like shows off the scale mail she's wearing. Quite useful. Thank you again for lending me some money. I was a bit short. It was no problem. I don't have a huge use for money anymore. Well, I do appreciate it. And, oh, and she's like going through like her pack real quick. She's like, I, I picked you up something. Is Thank you. And she will pull out like a tiny crystal. I would get probably like a little red crystal. <laughs> I'm not sure if Uthal would immediately recognize it, but it would be an arcane focus. Okay. Um, I feel like Uthal, knowing kind of what arcane focuses are, would immediately recognize it. Yeah, if you're a you're a shadow sorcerer. You you know what arcane forest or arcane forest arcane focus whenever you see one. Oh, thanks, Roxy. I no problem. She hands it over to him. It, I, I was going to find something more religious, but I figured that this was more practical since yeah. You don't, and with that last line, uh, with with that last sentence, I know it's not the last sentence you're probably going to say, but the, with that sentence, um, please roll me a one d ten thousand. This is from Aurora, who has been waiting patiently. Um, but I wanted to wait till you were in a conversation with. Okay, what to do? Watch Uthal with, get hit by a cup. With Uthal. All right. <laughs> then I'll have two cups. <laughs> the white, the cups to rule the wall. Ooh. Okay. Um, I'm just going to paste this in here, and then you can note this on your character sheet. But basically, the next potion you create, or I'm going to say, like, since you're, none of you guys can create potions, the next potion that you consume um, alerts everyone to where your whereabouts. So if you want to reword that and note that on your sheet. Okay. It's <laughs> very... Interesting. Uh, and Aurora says, Welcome back, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, Aurora. Kicking it off. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Aurora, for the $15 Appreciate for you. the kids at St. Jude. And for those of you who are watching or just tuning in now, um, there are many ways that you can be part of this and uh, affect the game. To the right of me, if you do exclamation point St. Jude, you can see all of these lovely options. Make sure you tell me what type of thing you would like to happen and who you'd like it to be for. Otherwise, I will choose. I normally let RNG choose, RNG choose because I think it's funnier that way. Um, <laughs> it always seems to be it's perfect. It's amusing. Yeah, it, it seems to be choosing things uh, very perfectly, which has worked out great for us. 
um, thus far. But yeah, continue your conversation. Um, um, I'm trying to remember where I was at. Oh yeah, I figured it was more practical. I was trying to find something like, and then she like kind of like messes with her necklace a bit, but I couldn't really find anything. This is great, Roxy. Uh, Thank you. This will be very helpful in our travels. He Uthal uh, specifically oh. says our travels. Uh. <laughs> probably, probably goes over her head at first and then she's like, oh. <laughs> she's just more excited, like, it's more of like, she's excited right now, like, I did a thing. <laughs> excited. Awesome. Um, are you guys both going to stay um, and continue chit-chatting outside? Um, is that the plan for a little bit? Um, um, I mean, I I think at this point she's just going to try to catch up with Uthal and see what she's missed while she was out of the town for the most like anything. Like, otherwise, that's really it. Okay. okay. Uthal yeah. would probably just be giving her information of like what's been going on and all the such all right yeah you guys both while you guys are both catching up and kind of exchanging conversations about um roxy's trip to get uh armor and uthal's adventures in the forest and such we pan back over as varus walks into the door of the inn um artith what are you doing in the inn as Varys walks in and sees uh, what you. What time of day is it? Um, it's probably evening because I think you guys you guys left the forest in the night, so it's probably really pretty late in the evening. Imagine probably, like yeah. seven eight p.m. type of thing. Okay, I'd also probably have a a table somewhere out of the way so one of the ones around that sort of thing and just be sat there having a drink um, probably having eaten a meal earlier okay um yeah something is weird about the food it just tastes terrible everything you're eating tastes like you're eating vomit it's not a pleasant thing but you're hungry and need to eat yeah yeah um it's been like that for a little while uh, the food here just has not been that great um, recently, it seems, within the past mm. few weeks. Um, and thank you, Aurora. I got that. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely find the perfect time to use it. Um, and Varys, you can see Ardoth off in the distance. That was something that you wanted to do is to chat with him. So you see him in the corner kind of minding his own business. Um, you also see um, Alexei setting up... Uh, for another night of singing and, and possibly playing some instruments for the inn. Uh, there's a few other people that you no you notice and you remember who are in the inn. The odd thing you don't see is your your birdman friend. He's not around. Mm. Town's been a lot quieter lately. Yeah. <laughs> Does Arnoth have a drink with him already? Yes, but... Uh, we can say it's, it's getting low. Alright. I'll get two drinks and I'll walk up to you and just like put a drink for you on the table. Like, mind if I join you? And he'll gesture to the seat opposite. I take a seat. So, how how's your uh, time here been lately? Peaceful. This was good, given the things that are out there. And he'll nod to that. I was hoping to have a word with you, actually. I ran into a lady that sneaks into town occasionally. And I like describe um, the mage, the wizard. Yeah, um... He describes this woman who tends to wear this 
dark blue, deep navy cloak. Um, it's a large cloak. It has a little clasp on it with some kind of symbol. Um, she has black hair and a very, uh, very pale white skin with piercing blue eyes and um, very feminine features. Almost like, almost elvenish looking. I don't think Ardoth's ever seen her, has she? I don't think Ardoth has. No, okay. You met her? She spoke to me, but not with... Not like I am talking to you right now. She spoke to my mind. And when I spoke ah. to Uthal about it, he said, Ah, she speaks like Ardoth does. I was hoping you could tell me a bit more about that. What do you want to know? Well, how does it work? How can she talk to my mind directly, for example? Now, that's a very good question. Would I actually know how telepathy works? Um, I think you would. I mean, it's something that you've done most of your life, right? Mm, certainly for a few years before I came here. Yeah, for a few years. Few years is, a, is a, quite a bit of time to have done that. Um, for you, it was an, a magical thing, right? Like it's, it was something that just kind of happened to you yeah. as you were studying further and further into the magics that you had. Um, it was almost like you had a connection to others' something. minds. Yeah. Okay. How would he explain this? But you would know that there are other ways to do telepathy. There are spells people can cast yeah. uh, that can connect you. There are um, items there are that can bond one of you, one another to to be able to telepath uh, telepathically to speak to one another. And there's also items that will allow you to telepathically speak to people within a range of you. So there's a lot of different um, ways that that can occur. I'm assuming you would also know that there are some species that are naturally telepathic? Yes, for sure. Like an abolith or something like that, you would know that those yeah. creatures just yeah. can do it on their own. So... Sorry, what was the original question again? How telepathy basically works, how can she talk to my mind? Ah, yes. Mind speech is is like talking except You create a link, a bridge between you and who you talk to. There if are many ways of doing this. If she were to establish this bridge with me again, does that mean she can also see what's coming out of my mind? Or is it simply her... Is it like a one-way bridge? Or... You can only cross the bridge one direction. <laughs> I don't think that's how bridges work, Varys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I know. Gotta pass the mind bridge, troll. <laughs> I could not have done. But other things that exist, yes. They could know what you think. Good to know. This wizard, she unsettles me. She made a tree move and a bush and might have made a ghoul appear. She's located to the south in the flip dark woods. 
She is definitely wizard. I saw her using a book while casting her magics. I see. We attacked her for a while after defeating her goons, but she was able to get away. She might have teleported. I know she can cast invisibility as well. She's pulled that one on me before. <laughs> it is a simple enough spell, yes. She took quite a beating, though. That is what worries me. I have a feeling we'll encounter her more often, and she seems to have made several trips into town. Prior to us actually engaging her in hostility. Before that, she was just curious. She was wondering what she wants from me. I don't quite know who she is. But I have suspicions. And I could use your help tomorrow. Hard off, we'll just nod. I appreciate that. Though I would want to inform you fully before you commit yourself to this. Oh? Do you know of the dragon that's been showing around town recently? Yes, helped us against those... Gorgons? Yes, the, the gaggle of them. I noticed that the dragon was looking back at us and smiling. And I've seen the dragon before interfering in fights happening here. I've been able to locate it while in the forest today. Or rather, I was able to get a precise distance and direction from inside the forest. I'm going to be locating it again later tonight before I meditate. So that tomorrow I will be fresh to face it. Preferably non-violent, violently, but talking with a dragon carries risk, of course. Of course. That's why I was hoping to gather a few able-bodied or able-minded people. Ah. My mind is... Hmm. More and less than what it once was. But I will aid you. I appreciate that. This town has a way of influencing people. <laughs> Changing them, you mean? Yes, that too, at times. He, he like tucks his shirt and is like trying to hide there's a big hairy horse tail now growing under his armor <laughs> that was a thing that happened yeah speaking of which um Ferris Romeo 1d10,000 yep here we go <laughs> brought to end. you by Aurora Marie Aurora Marie is just dishing it out today uh the note was back to picking on Rick and I was like oh I'll find the perfect moment to do it don't you worry <laughs> I try to like make sure that they make sense with the RP, uh, but just yeah. as you say that, roll me one d four. Oh no! Right now, the tavern doesn't have four doors. Oh four. god! For four minutes, you are obsessed with what you've done to make this place better. What? You what your actions have been to to quell whatever evil is lurking through here or whatever it is that you think that Varys has done that has been that should be respected that people should be bowing before him because he has done this so well you see, the reason I'm chasing after this dragon, it all started when this giant bloody lizard came walking into town. And all of a sudden, you know, it was preceded by this halfling who is depicted on that 
painting for whatever reason. You know, he came in running naked, screaming about a T-Rex. Eventually, the darn thing actually showed up and we fought it. I tried to climb it so I could, like, try to tame it or talk to it. But then this big bloody dragon started appearing. And I had to leap off quickly in order to not get taken away with it. I would have taken that bloody lizard out if not for that beast. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to take it on. Or at least, you know, figure out what the hell's going on with it. And then there was this excursion into the woods just now, after the uh, the wizard appeared in town. She's a bit of an odd one. God. They will put me on that wall once we take her down, I tell you that. Not to mention this dragon. I've ridden that T-Rex, I want to ride that dragon. People are going to spread tales far and wide of Varys Meliumne, the dragon tamer. Basically Thank that for four minutes. Thank you. I love it. Yeah, Varys goes on and on talking about and it. when he finally stops, Ardoth will simply ask. Ardoth would just sit there and listen. I love that. And also, yeah. someone else was like, Oh, so he just becomes Tover. Basically, yes. Uh. Yeah. So at the end of For those that, of you who uh, are just tuning in, Tover is another character uh, part of this world, um, played by Paladin uh. Hulk. So we have a persistent world, and every week we have new characters. Um, and someone else had just joined recently as well. And was wondering what this raid for the kids is. Um, basically, we are space Vikings and we are raiding to help the kids at St. Jude um, make sure that they're able to get all of the things that they need in order to be cured of cancer or um, at least help them along their journey. And so if you do explanation point St. Jude in chat, you can see all of the options here um, on that link and you can donate for specific things. Make sure you know who those things are going for. And for instance, if you choose the $10 Natty 1 or Natty 20, make sure you tell me which one you're... you're trying to provide to people. Cool, cool. Go ahead, Ardoth. I knew you were going to speak up next. Yeah, basically, you'll just turn to Varys and say, why did you say that? I don't know. Just kind of felt compelled like it suddenly. Hmm. <laughs> All of a sudden, he's just like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. It's not the first time people in this town have started random tirades. Anyway. I will be setting up camp, like I described where it is, to the south of the, uh, to the town from now on, to keep an eye on the, uh, the woods. There's a lot of evil in that place. And since I don't need to sleep, I just have to meditate for a couple of hours. I will be taking on the burden of keeping watch on the uh, the days that I'm not out adventuring. I see. You I suggest we use there? that. Yes, I will be sleeping there. I will be staying there. Basically, if I'm not out adventuring or procure procuring stuff or like meeting people in a tavern and so forth, I will be there. I suggest we use that as a meeting place for tomorrow then when we... Uh, set out on this venture. Hmm. Yes. Marvelous. Alright. Alright, I should probably uh, be going then. It's been a pleasure talking to you. 